Hey, so in this video, we're going to use a, a sign function to make a platform move up and down so we can jump on it and then, you know, ride it into the sky into a, another platform. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to make our starting platform, the moving platform, and the sky platform. They're just going to be three cubes, so game object, 3D object, cube. Going to make it eight times bigger on the x-axis and eight times bigger on the z-axis. And I'm going to move it up to y equals 20. And put it at x is 0, z is 0, and the player is going to come all the way up to 0, 22, 0. So we, the player is right at the start there. And another platform, game object, 3D object, cube. Going to put it at 0, 20, 0, and then maybe just move it over. I'm going to make it a little bigger again. And that's pretty good. And we're going to make one more. You're going to click on this, Control C, Control V, or Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. And it'll make a second uh, platform here and just move it over. And this one's going to be at Y is. 40, I guess. Right, so that's the sky platform. So I, th they're white right now. I'm gonna make them a nicer texture. So in assets, standard assets, this, this, this. So pick a texture. I'm gonna go with cliff. You just click and drag. So that's a little better. So what we want is to use sign to make this smoothly go up and down so that we can hop on it and then go on that platform. I'm actually going to delete the floor. So the stakes are high. You can fall and it'll be the end of all things. So in assets, right click, create, C sharp script. We're going to call it oscillator, enter, and double click that to open it up. So these are the text instructions we're going to give the game to tell the cube to move up and down. And here, when we start, we need to save our start position so that, you know, if we've moved to the top, we don't forget where we started. We have to come back to it. We have to know where we started. This update will happen 60 times a second or so. It's going to happen a lot, and each time we're going to slightly change our position to be following that sine wave. So a sine wave looks like this, if I can draw it. Yeah, okay, so if the x-axis the x here is our time, so as time goes on, we're going to go in this direction, and we're going to get the y value wherever that time is. So if time is at one second, then we're going to look up here, and we're going to say, oh, the y is equal to 0 0.8. And then we keep going. Later, we want maybe time is 2.31 seconds. So we'll look down here, and we'll say, oh, it's negative 7.72 is the y. And then we're going to use sine to get that smooth motion. And it's called wave for a reason. It's going to look wavy. So in the script, okay, so like I said, we need to save that start position. So here I'm saying I'm making a new container called start position. The type is vector 3, and all this means is it's going to have three numbers in it, the x, y, and z. So when we start, start position will equal our position. This is how in, in C sharp and in, in Unity, how you talk about my position of the cube. So we're going to save that start position once at the start. And then on update, we need to first, well, we need to get the x value, the y value, and the z value, OK? And then every time we're going to set our position to be that. So each time we're just going to make it a new vector 3. A position is a vector 3 with those three numbers. Now, how do we know what x, y, and z are? Well, in Unity, if we look at this cube, right? if I move it upwards, you can see in the top right here, y is changing. So that's the one we want to change, y. The others, we want to keep them the same. So x is just going to be the same, our start position x. The z is going to be start position z. 
Now y we need to calculate using sine. And in C-sharp, the, the language we're writing in, or, or unity, um, that's how you get sine. And we just need to give it the time. And you get this in unity by typing time since the level started, the game started. And that's all there is to it. So save this, control S, go into unity. And one last thing before we press play, Right now, this file, oscillator, is just a text file on our computer. We need to attach it to the game so the game uses it. So click on this moving guy, add component, oscillator, and press play. And right, it's all the way down there. Oh, yes. So sign, the reason it's doing that, in fact, I'll show you something. Press play, now I'm gonna pause the game while it's running. So it's all the way down here. Its Y position is 0.82, okay? So the reason for that is the highest value of sine is one, and the lowest value is negative one. So in my code, I just said Y is equal to some number between negative one and one. You know, it's gonna go between those, but my y, that's too low, right? Because I started up here at 20. So I need to actually add that 20. And it's going to be plus start position dot y. So save that. Press play. There we go. So it's where it started, except it's not moving very much. And that's the amplitude of the wave. It's just the height of the wave. So this is moving up and down, up one and then down one. That's all it can do. So if this is a height of one, then you could have actually another wave like this, right? And all we'd have to do is take the red wave, the sine wave, and multiply it by two. So at this point, it's, it's one, but times two, it would be two. And right here, maybe it's 0 0.4. So if I multiply that by 2 right here, it's going to be 0 0.8. So this sign right here, I'm just going to say 20 times that. And that's shift 8, by the way, this little star character for multiplication. So control S to save. And we're going to look at this one more time. Okay, the platform is really moving. I'm actually thinking if I jump on this, it's gonna blast me away. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, it didn't, that's nice. Okay, what's gonna happen if I jump off this fast moving thing? Huh. Yes, I made it. Okay, there's your moving platform with the sine function.